So we have Patrick CC, and the question is in this video, will Twitch be around in seven years? In the start, they didn't listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now they win the center. Twitch has been on a steady decline for the past two years and they have no idea how to fix it. They are potentially losing hundreds of millions of dollars per year, laying off hundreds of employees, banning some of their most important creators, implementing useless features, and are constantly proving how little they know or care about the live streaming community. Twitch has been the biggest live streaming platform for the better part of a decade, but there is some competition on the horizon. Although it wouldn't take much for YouTube to put Twitch out of their misery, it's very likely that their collapse will come from their own self-sabotage. First and foremost, Twitch's financial stability is confusing. And although they reported $2.8 billion in revenue in 2022, it's unclear how much of that, if any, was profit. However, there are a lot of implications that suggest the company is struggling to be in the green. Twitch's four ways of making money are through subscribers, who pay $5 a month to get an ad-free experience, as well as other small benefits, in-app purchases, which include bits, a digital currency that users can purchase to donate to streamers, partnerships with brands and sponsors, and of course, the number one, <laughs> advertising. We don't know how many total paid subscribers there are on Twitch. I did find- Speaking of advertising, advertisements. They run so much commercials when you go on pages. Like, I went on Kai's page to watch when he came back and just, just ads out the wazoo. Crazy. Find this metric from Stream Hatchet that says in April of 2021, Twitch had 8.7 million subscribers, where 43% of them were Amazon Prime subs. A Prime subscriber is someone who gets an ad-free experience for $0 since they already have an Amazon Prime membership, because Amazon owns Twitch. Therefore, Twitch doesn't make any money on that sub. In fact, you could argue they're losing money since viewers are paying $0 and mm. not getting ads, and Twitch has to pay creators $1 and some change for that Prime sub. Anyway, Anyways, this graph indicates that in the month of April, Twitch had 4.7 million paid subscribers, times $5, which is 23.5 million, times 12 months average, which would be about $282 million in sub revenue in 2021. But Twitch on average receives between 30 and 50% of that money, because for affiliate streamers, Twitch takes 50%, or $2.50 of the $5 subscriber price, and for partners, they take 30% or $1.50 of the $5. So if we favor the high end of 50%, that would equal $141 million in subscriber revenue that goes to Twitch. But if Stream Hatchet's estimation of Twitch only having 4.7 million paid subscribers per month is wrong, and they actually have around 10 to 20 million paid subscribers per month, that would bring Twitch's cut between 300 and $600 million per year. Some people argue that Twitch taking a 50% cut of sub revenue is just an act of greed, because most of their money comes from advertising. Now, 141 one to six hundred million dollars is nothing to scoff at, but compared to two point eight billion, I could see why people make the claims. However, it seems like Twitch needs this money to keep their business from failing. According to a blog post in November 2022, where Twitch president Dan Clancy who is now the CEO, announced that creators who make over $100,000 in sub revenue will no longer get their 70-30 split. It will go down to 50-50, and over time, all creators will split the sub revenue 50-50 with Twitch. Why? Whoa. Well, because it's too expensive to run Twitch. Delivering high definition, low latency, always available live video to nearly every corner of the world is expensive. Using the published rates from Amazon's Web Services Interactive Video Service, or IVS, which is essentially Twitch Video, live video costs for a 100 CCU streamer who streams 200 hours a month are more than $1,000 per month. Now what they said here is very misleading. If you want to start your own live stream platform, you can pay for Amazon IVS, or basically Twitch's infrastructure. The problem with Dan's statement here is, there is simply no way Amazon is charging Twitch the same rate that anyone else would be charged for using IVS. Why wouldn't Amazon do that? Well again, because Amazon owns Twitch. Amazon would charge me or you $1,000 per month to deliver HD live video to 100 concurrent viewers at 200 hours a month, but they likely Damn. charge Twitch at least 50 to 90% less than that. In fact, nobody has any real idea of how much it costs to run Twitch. Obviously, you have employee compensation with thousands of employees, but more importantly, billions of dollars per year in energy costs to maintain those servers and deliver perfect quality on-demand streaming all over the world 
at any given moment. And although we don't know those costs, we could pretty safely say that taking a higher percentage from their partners is not going to cover the expenses. Now regarding how much Twitch makes from Bits, it's unclear, but I'm sure most streamers can agree that Bits donations are nowhere near as common as subscribers. It was reported that Twitch generated $185 million from in-app purchases. I'm not sure if this includes subscribers and Bits together, or if it's just Bits and other microtransactions like badges, gift Crazy because it sounds like so much money, but then again, you know, you don't know what it costs to run a company. So it they really could just be in the red. Cards in the loot cave. Either way, we are learning that at best, Twitch is generating roughly $750 million from subs and in-app purchases, or at worst, $185 million. Regardless of what the real numbers are, we know that without a doubt, Twitch could never survive on just paid subscribers and in-app purchases, which means that likely Crazy. the two plus billion dollars in revenue they generated in 2022, pretty much it comes from advertising and brand partnerships. The problem with this is, advertisements are destroying the viewer experience. Creators have a terrible revenue split with Twitch, which has led to a near 10% decrease in average viewership and watch time for the past two years. We all know how annoying ads can be, besides when I do them, because today's video is sponsored by Aura. Have you ever Googled your name and seen yourself on one of the- Yeah, let's, let's try to skip this. I, I think I found it. <laughs> Thanks, Aura. On an average Twitch stream, a viewer oh, will get it. a minimum of three minutes of advertisements per hour. However, in late 2022, Twitch announced the rollout of the Ads Incentive Program, where they encourage streamers to run eight to 10 minutes of ads per hour. Multiple minutes of ads being displayed consecutively will result in viewers either leaving the platform or clicking off to another streamer. The only yep. problem is every time you click on a new stream, you will get hit with another non-skippable 30 second ad. There is no way to skip the ads. There is no way to escape the ads and there is no way to rewind the stream and see what you just missed. This has led to a near 10% decrease in hours watched and average viewers from 2021 to 2022. And both of those metrics are also down in 2023 by 5%. Simply put, there are too many ads on Twitch, but that's a good thing for the company, right? Well, not exactly. Twitch does not have an immense amount of data on who their viewers are because there isn't a whole lot to do on the platform to track it. Think about YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. In just a few minutes, you will be exposed to a large variety of different niches and you are actively pressing the like button or stopping to engage with the content. The amount of specific information you give about yourself without realizing is just data that gets organized and used to sell targeted ads to you. Because of my Instagram habits, the app knows that I like men's streetwear and accessories, skateboarding, modern furniture, rap music, and golf, so they can send me ads related to those things. All Twitch knows about me is that I watch I'm Dante a lot, and that he's my favorite streamer. So they could maybe guess what I might be interested in based on what they think I'm Dante's viewers like. And because of this, most advertisers don't feel comfortable using Twitch because they don't know if they are truly selling to their target audience. Are you drinking water? When you advertise on YouTube, a brand like Pampers can target as specific as 28-year-old married women that live in the eastern United States and are pregnant or just had their first child. And YouTube can run ads so that mostly viewers who fit in that category will see those ads. If Pampers went to Twitch with that target audience in mind, they would simply not know where to run the ads. The only thing that Twitch knows is that their audience is mostly men ages 13 to 35 who like video games. This eliminates a huge chunk of potential revenue because only a small amount of brands want to advertise to that audience. Energy drink brands, unhealthy snack brands, car brands, and other men's lifestyle brands love advertising on Twitch, which leads to interesting sponsorships like QT Cinderella baking a cake on a live stream, but with a manscaped partnership that says we save balls on the screen. To make things worse for advertisers, every deal has to be a long conversation with the ad sales team at Twitch, back and forth emails, phone calls, contracts, a process that takes forever. But any brand or individual can simply go to YouTube, click start advertising, and run a campaign without ever talking to anyone. Twitch will never be a real competitor if they don't figure out a way to get more reliable data on their users and create a programmatic ad system so brands can sell to their audience without relying on communication with a Twitch employee. And because of their inability to produce substantial revenue, they hired internal leadership who would shift the focus away from creators and towards driving profits. The senior vice president of global creators, Constance Knight, created a new initiative, cut costs, cut costs, cut costs. 
Every decision over the course of her tenure was fully based on how it was going to increase company profits, which isn't necessarily her position since she is the head of global creators. Therefore, the needs of creators were constantly being ignored. In one specific example, Houseway. How? It's in your title, right? Knight said that burnout was not a valid reason for creators to not meet contractual obligations. If you don't know, most of Twitch's top creators have contracts directly with the platform where they are being paid essentially a salary or hourly rate to stream exclusively on the platform. These contracts require them to stream anywhere from 70 to 100 hours per month, which is roughly 3 hours per day or 4 hours per day if you want the weekends off. But the VP was not letting creators use burnout, or basically them being unmotivated to stream, as a valid excuse to not meet their monthly stream requirements, which led to Twitch employees feeling like the company was losing its way. Twelve Twitch employees had gone to HR or logged complaints with their superiors overnight. Five had left the company citing Knight as a reason. Now some of you watching could never be convinced that sitting at a computer and playing video games could become a stressful or an annoying job in any way, shape, or form. But at the end of the day, it still is a job, and anyone can burn out from any job that they do every single day for years. Another previous Twitch employee took to YouTube to state how they feel about the company. Twitch doesn't care about creators. Twitch cares about looking like they care about <laughs> creators. Everything Twitch has done for the last four years has been with the goal of feeling like they understand and care. Although this could seem like an employee who is just right, upset about being fired, board. Twitch has shown time and time again that no matter how large of a creator you are, they will take you down, even at your highest moment. Kai Sinat, a creator who only just started streaming in February of 2021, dominated Twitch in all of 2022. He reached the very rare milestone of 100,000 subscribers, which made him the number one most subscribed creator at that time. This prompted him to do a subathon, which was a 24 7, 28 day long non stop stream in February 2023 to try and break the record for earning the most subscribers on Twitch in a single month. That record was previously held by Ludwig at 283. Thousand. Not only did Kai break it, he demolished it, peaking at 306,621 yep. all-time subscribers. It was reported that he earned Twitch $10 million, while Kai only received a $2 million payout. These numbers were false, and Kai did not appreciate the narrative. Twitch made 15 to $20 million on Kai Sinat, and Kai only brought about $2 million back to the, to the, to the... Bro, where are y'all getting these numbers from? Where are, these, oh, where, bro, where are these numbers coming from? Because now it's a narrative that I'm just a black man who's getting used for millions and millions and millions of dollars. Kai breaking the sub record was huge news, covered by publications like the BBC and Bloomberg. And most of us would assume that Twitch would do anything to boost Kai up. After all, he made history on their platform. At the very least, they would try That's to use this amazing number. moment to show the world what wonderful opportunities there are for creators on Twitch. They could squeeze out more press with Kai and do campaigns to get more people or brands interested in live streaming. But no, instead, they sent him a $100 pair of sneakers and banned him from their platform. It better be a contract in there. Oh, Congratulations, Kai, on your huge accomplishment. We are so proud of you, Laura, Anna, and all of your friends at Twitch. Oh, what the f <laughs> Unfortunately, there was no contract in that package. Uh, Twitch man. did not see enough value in Kai to offer him a streaming contract or they are making a very strategic business move. Twitch is very top heavy, meaning the top creators are making all of the money. Only 5% of Twitch streamers made over $1,000 in 2021, and 50% of all of their revenue comes from 1% of their creators. Kai became a one percenter without getting an exclusive contract, which means Twitch is profiting immensely off him. It seems like they are not giving him a paid contract because they don't think he will leave. His largest audience and main financial vehicle is on Twitch, and if it was up to them, they wouldn't give streamers contracts to begin with. They want to get to a point where they aren't as reliant on the top 1% of creators. So if someone leaves the platform, they will be just fine. YouTube has 600 creators with over 10 million subscribers. If 20% of those people stopped creating, YouTube wouldn't be hurting financially. Eventually those creators will be replaced. But Twitch 1%ers can't be replaced as quickly or as easily. Maybe Kai is a transitional point for Twitch as a company to see if they can keep 1% talent without paying them additional money. 
Just a few short weeks after they sent him the sneakers, Kai Sinat announced he was banned from the platform they on banned. April 17th. How could they possibly ban the number one creator on the site? Nobody knew the reason why, but it prompted support from people like Kyrie Irving and Nicki Minaj. We later found out that Twitch told Kai it was from a GTA clip where he promoted simulated sexual activity. This was the clip. Come on up. Five, four, three, two. Oh my god! My boss! My boss! He pretended like he was receiving services from a fake woman in a video game. Meanwhile, there's a ton of real borderline <laughs> sexual activity on that website, let alone simulated. Oh, Twitch is just reminding him that he, no matter how big he is, will not be able to break the rules. And everyone knows Twitch's terms of service are extremely unclear. In 2019, Brazilian Twitch streamer Gabriel Baptista received a suspension because he showed a Pink Floyd poster during his broadcast. Faria was banned for wearing gym clothes that Twitch claimed looked like lingerie. Bro, it's so, it's so hard when you're like an actual gamer on streaming. That's what, that's what it seems like when you're just trying to game and have fun. They try to get you, but as you saw that previous clip, there's so much sexual content on Twitch. It's not even funny. Not Deller even funny. was banned for smashing a keyboard over his head, and Doctor Disrespect was banned for while well, they never told him why. Sadly, Kai's ban is just one of an extremely long list of incredibly stupid bans that Twitch has given out and will continue to in the future. So with Twitch continuously making the wrong decisions when it comes to profits, employees, and creators, is competition a real threat to their company? Recently, the live streaming platform Kick has made some noise after their $30 million plus deal where they exclusively acquired Aiden Ross. Kick works and looks exactly almost like Twitch. The main difference is that they have a much more lenient terms of service. Streamers can gamble, say and do just about anything they want without getting banned, and the biggest thing is that they are offering creators a 95% cut of their subscriber revenue. Jared FPS, a kick streamer, highlighted his kick earnings at $3,800 for 800 subscribers, which would be about $2,000 on Twitch. However, I don't think this is going to be enough to really compete with Twitch. Think about all of the problems I highlighted in this video. Kick is going to have to deal with all of those same problems, but more importantly with advertisers, they will be targeting the same niche as Twitch, but with less censorship and more risque content, advertisers will feel even less comfortable than they already do with Twitch. But the biggest problem is, Kick is built on Amazon IVS. Remember when Twitch said it was too expensive to run Twitch on IVS? Well, Kick uses the same infrastructure. The difference is, Kick is likely paying at least 20 to 50% more than Twitch is to keep their business operating. So in a way, no matter how successful Kick gets, they will be paying millions, if not billions to Amazon, who could use that money to fund Twitch. Now, YouTube Game. I don't think Amazon's gonna use it to fund Twitch. I think Amazon's just gonna try to find a way to make themselves just the ultimate streaming caster, I guess you could say. I think. Or their live streaming sector could very well be a threat. The worst part about YouTube is that the live streaming experience is just not as good. The chat is chaotic and hard to read. You can't look at chat logs, which makes it really hard to moderate. The raid feature is terrible. The discovery page for live streamers actually looks like they don't update it. And they lack many of the small features that make Twitch streaming more dynamic and more fun. Yet even with all of those downsides, YouTube still holds nearly 15% market share in the live streaming space. So why is YouTube a threat? It's very simple. YouTube has 2.5 billion monthly active users compared to Twitch's 140 million. YouTube has a strong and reliable ad revenue system, which generated $29 billion last year. Plus, they are offering 70-30 splits for streamers. And if you build a following up as a streamer on YouTube, you now have a whole YouTube channel that you can post regular videos on. You just built yourself two assets at one time. Most Twitch streamers have to post clips of their streams on YouTube in order to grow. And even still, the translation is not that great, and they end up being more popular on YouTube. If YouTube just got their live streaming page to operate exactly like Twitch or Kick, which wouldn't really be that hard for them, it wouldn't make any sense for small streamers to use Twitch. 1% streamers like Hassan and XQC wouldn't immediately jump ship, or maybe never because they already have a huge following. At the same time, everybody has a price. Nobody thought Ludwig would switch platforms, but he did. So why hasn't YouTube tried to take Check. over? Especially since I claim it'll be so easy for them. 
Maybe they just don't see live streaming as a worthwhile business investment. Think about everything I mentioned in this video. All the hurdles, all the expenses, all the bans, moderation, discoverability issues, creator contracts, advertiser uncertainty. Maybe YouTube thinks that live streaming will never be as profitable as video on demand, film, sports entertainment, and music streaming. Maybe live streaming will always be considered a niche subgenre of the entertainment industry. Until YouTube sees a bar packed full of people paying a $10 cover to watch Hassan debate Aiden Ross or Kai Sanat and 21 Savage react to Drake memes, they probably won't even bother. So what should Twitch do? Well, they definitely need to figure out a middle ground with ads. They need advertisers to pay the bills, and we as viewers understand that. Maybe a feature could be implemented that allows viewers to skip an ad or two just in case they pop up at a crucial time in the stream. Maybe even a feature that allows viewers to watch ads for a reward, or uninterrupted ad time when there's some downtime in somebody's stream. Kind of like how mobile games will allow you to watch an ad for a reward. Or you could That's exchange personal smart. survey information for less ads. It's invasive, but hey, they're gonna try to do that anyway. And after they improve their ad system, just keep the 70-30 revenue split with all creators, big or small. Most platforms provide a better split than that, so that's the least they can do. Also, more clarity and consistency when it comes to streamer bans seems like a very fair ask. Just tell people why they were banned, in detail. Timestamp it, provide a clip. Every single time someone is banned, it should be the same process. Most importantly, they need to improve discoverability for small slash medium sized creators. Twitch streamers relying on YouTube or TikTok to gain a following is absolutely ludicrous. Twitch is way too reliant on the one percenters and they're way too reliant on other platforms. Ultimately, I wanna see Twitch win and the streaming community wants to see them win as well. I think live streamers are incredibly underrated in terms of their entertainment value and ability to hold an audience for hours on end. But if they don't make these critical improvements and YouTube just decides to invest a billion dollars into making YouTube gaming a fierce competitor, I think Twitch could be on the verge of going out of business five to 10 years down the line. Hello. Oh snap, Gran Turismo. But I want to say this really quick. I really, I really do hope Twitch focuses on the small people because, you know, I have fun on Twitch, so I really hope they they focus on the small guys, small small people. I should say guys, small people, because it'll be cool to kind of get more discovered on Twitch instead of having to put everything on clips and all that stuff.